Hi everyone, thanks so much for joining me here on Design Notes. I'm so happy to talk to you today about some of my five favorite design tips for getting a high-end design on a low-end budget. The first one is draw yourself a furniture plan. A furniture plan can easily be done with a sheet of paper, a tape measure, a ruler or a straight edge, and a pencil. Just go around your space, measure along all the walls, be sure to notate for the doors and any key components like electrical outlets. Once you have the basic floor plan, then you can look online for standard dimensions for furniture types and even create little cardboard cutouts that you can manipulate around the floor plan that you created to find a good layout for the space. Pay attention to making sure that you have good circulation between all the furniture items. And once you have a furniture plan, stick with it. That is the key for getting your design. Even if you have an extremely low budget, if you have that furniture plan, you can build up to the final design. You can embrace the temporary fixes. You know, maybe you can get a new couch if it's the right dimensions and just put it in the right space. It'll encourage you to go towards that end design. So just because you don't have all the money right now, you can phase your project with a furniture plan and it'll allow you to get that high-end design later down the road, but build towards it step by step. My second tip for you today is to go on buy nothing sites. Once you have the furniture plan already in your hands, that's it, that's your blueprint, that's your map of where you know the space needs to go. That's your end goal. So take a look at a Buy Nothing site. There's often one for almost every town nowadays, but if there isn't, you can go on Facebook and create your own Buy Nothing site. They're fabulous. People essentially are giving away items for free on the Buy Nothing site. And one of the most common items that you'll see on Buy Nothing sites is furniture. If you don't have a Buy Nothing site, you can also try your local tag sales that are online. Look for high quality pieces. Leather items are always great. They just need a wipe down. And as long as the furniture is the scale that you've already notated in your furniture plan, you're set to go. It's only going to cost you uh, a trip over there, so the gas over there, and maybe you need to give a friend of yours you know, a coffee that day. So, you know, get yourself some extra help and grab those pieces of furniture that you can get for free. My third tip for you today is to barter. If you want to make some larger changes in your home, let's say you want to have the wallpaper down or you need some built-in cabinets and you just have zero carpentry skills and you really can't paint a lick, you know, look for someone in your town, maybe even a friend of yours that does have some skills and think about your own talents and what you could offer them in exchange. If they have carpentry skills or uh, just, you know, even fixer-upper skills that you need and you can't do, ask them if they'd be willing to barter services with you. Say, you know, if you could come over and help me with my house, I can do whatever your talent is for you. And maybe they will be interested in doing that. I know I've done that myself with friends. And it's a really great way to get a project done on your home for no money down. My fourth tip and trick for you is to remember the old saying, a place for everything and everything in its place. This is an oldie, but a goodie. You really need to make sure, and again, here you're going to look at your furniture plan, that the only items in your space are items that you've planned for. What you do not want to do is go to Home Goods, find something that catches your eye, and say, Oh my gosh, I just have to find a place for this. That is going to end up with a cluttered space. You really want to make sure that every single item in your space has a purpose. Once you have your room done and your furniture plan is in, and you have a place for everything and everything is in its place, you don't need anything else to go in there. You're not going to have a cluttered up space. You're not going to have to declutter because you're not going to want to put anything in there again. It will be a balanced room that you will have achieved. So remember that old saying, a place for everything and everything in its place. It's a key in a good interior design. 
my final suggestion for you, and this one's going to wow you because you're going to think, oh my gosh, I have no money. How could she suggest this? It is hire an interior designer. The skills that they will bring to your project are invaluable. And you could call up a local designer and say, hey, could you come to my home and give me a design consultation? Essentially, you want to pick their brain for an hour, maybe even two hours. A good interior designer could cost anywhere from you know, $75 to $150, depending on where you are in the country. If you're on the East Coast, you're going to have a higher hourly price for your designer. If you hire them for an hour, you know, $75 to $150, you're not going to find a better place to spend your money because they can come in. If you have a tricky space, they're going to help you get past that design block. They're going to be able to give you suggestions on what furniture that you might already have you could, that you could keep. They can talk to you about color palette. Just be clear before they come into your home on what services they're willing to give you within that design consultation. That does vary by design. If you have a really tricky room, let's say you have a living room that's really narrow and really long at the same time. They could talk to you about breaking up that space into different conversational spaces so that you really have a good start and a good feel of where you want to go with your furniture plan. Just because you've created the design aesthetic on a Pinterest board doesn't mean when you try to translate that design aesthetic into reality that it's going to work. And that's where a professional can really come in and help you out. They're really great at seeing how a room could function and what they can do to make it better. Let them throw out the possibilities to you and then you can choose which ones you can make a reality based upon your budget. You could also talk to them about just purchasing items through them so you could take advantage of their interior designer discount. That's another service that interior designers can offer you. There are a lot of to-the-trade items, whether it be finishes like tile or wallpaper or fabric, that are exclusive to interior designers. You could call them up and ask them, could you purchase it through them? The interior designer will usually get a fee upon those purchases, but it'll be significantly less than hiring them to do the whole room. There's a lot of ways you can utilize your local designers that are outside of the box. The last thing I have to say about hiring an interior designer is the most important. When they come over, do not clean your house. Do not erase all your habits. You will just be wasting money if you do that. Because if you clean up your house before they come over, they will not see where it's not functioning. Show that designer where your, you know, your space is going wrong. So just you know, try to relax and just say, you know what, I'm not going to clean up before they come and let them come into your space and see where it's failing for you. And they'll be able to give you a much more accurate direction for that space. Thank you so much for joining me here today. I hope you enjoy this video of five tips and tricks for how to have great design on a low budget. I would love it if you could subscribe to my channel. And if you have any suggestions for future videos, please leave them in the comments below. Until then, I hope that you have a wonderful time making your house into a home.